All right, my name is Dael, and we were living overseas in the Philippines before I came here. I've lived all over the world, and we wanted to raise our kids in a, in a Jewish environment, in a Jewish life. So we came to Israel about three, uh, 2014. Uh, we had a couple kids born, one kid born since then. So we're living here in, uh, in Israel, and uh, our kids are in school, and they're speaking Hebrew. And basically, we're trying to uh, raise them in a Jewish way. Well, there's, there's basically two sets of problems. One problem is that uh, it took a long time for us to get an answer for our Leah, which we were denied. That was about 2010. And uh, after, uh, until recently, we got the approval. But the second problem is that there's a, a court case opened up, which I'm innocent. And uh, they said until that's taken care of, they can't continue giving us the Aaliyah until that's cleared up. And it seems to be a problem with them to clear it up. Oh, the case is about my, uh, there's a misunderstanding regarding my daughter at the, uh, at the social services. So it's an ongoing thing. So uh, basically that's what it is. I have hope. I have hope. Uh, yeah, I do have hope. We'll see what happens, but uh, I have hope that something can be worked out. If not, then I'll have to make a decision what to do. If it goes good, then hopefully, uh, uh, God willing, we'll get our Aliyah. We could live here as normal people, and uh, we can live like, like people come to Israel to live and uh, continue our life and have our kids grow up here. Well, basically, I can, I've lived all over the world, and I, left, I can live anywhere. We were living uh, in a nice piece of property uh, in Asia, and we left, we left that. We had a big piece of land with a lot of fruit trees, bananas, pineapples, coconuts near the ocean. And it was a pretty a free lifestyle, but there were, really was no real Jewish environment in that. So we had to go somewhere else, and it was too hard. So we thought we would raise our children in Israel, uh, and uh, like that. So we gave a, we gave a you know, nice, an easy lifestyle. You can, you can say that, yeah. Because I come from an all-Jewish background, my grandparents, everybody. So uh, we thought that we would continue living here in Israel, uh, a Jewish life, a real Jewish life. I, I think most people who come here, who make Aliyah, either uh, I think most of them come on Nefesh Benefesh, and they from all parts of the world, and they make it. I've heard some stories, some horror stories of certain people, but I think our case is very special because we really want to live here, and we're good people, and we've done nothing really wrong, and uh, the, the, re the religious spiritual part doesn't jive with the, uh, with the uh, how to say, their, their way of thinking of, uh, of, of modern Israel, of trying to have their archaic rules or whatever, imposed upon the people. It, it's not fair what they're doing because we've done nothing really wrong. We don't really have any promises, but we're trying to work it out. And th certain people have said they're willing because we're pushing it. We just didn't give up and leave. Uh, we're pushing it and uh, we have to take each step at a time and that we're, we're trying. We have a few more things coming up and we'll see how it goes. But it's been a long time already, since 2010. So this is already uh, six years. So we can't, I don't know how long we can go like this, but uh, some, some things just came up that this week and next week we'll know, and then uh, we'll have to make some decisions. Hopefully things will work out. No, nothing to do with that. Uh, and nothing to do with our life in the Philippines or living there, because my wife is Jewish and she can, you know, she's a converted, she's very, she's very Jewish, she raises her kids Jewish, and there's nothing wrong on that side. So uh, once you fall into the system in, uh, in Israel, and if, if they make a mistake, you're just like a, uh, a number, and it's like a blanket statement, and they don't really understand so much my situation. If they really knew, they might be acting differently. But they, I don't think they want to know, because they're just following what they say they have to do. It's amazing. I agree with you. A lot of people agree with you. It's amazing, I 100%, that we want to live here. We're, try we're good people. We have nothing against. We're simple people. We live here, we religious. But this is what's going on, and it's, it's really unfair. So, uh, but we still have faith in God that uh, you know, ultimately something is going to happen because it's all for the good. It was hard sometimes to go through that, but we have to believe that uh, the ultimate end is, is all for the good. Well, the local people, I have friends, they, you know, they treat us very nicely. We have nothing against the, uh, the regular people. We mix in very well. 
They love my wife, they love my kids, my kids go to school, I go, I study, yeshiva. So uh, we have no problem individually whatsoever. We have a few friends. We're, we're very family people. We don't go out much, but we, uh, we get along with everybody. I'm not quite sure exactly if it's in, in charge or whatever. Uh, it's a little confusing to me, but uh, they're holding back our aliyah for some re reasons we think is unfair. Our lawyers think it's not correct. And so we're trying to see, I don't know uh, if it's a charge or, I don't know how the system works in Israel, what, what really is legally, I'm not sure. There's some misunderstanding of, uh, with, with uh, I think with my daughter, and so they're trying, we're trying to work it out with the social services. So it's, uh, it's, it's, I'm not sure exactly what the charge, but uh, I'd rather not say it till I know for sure what, what, I'm, what I know what I'm talking about. There's no proof. There's no proof. Because it didn't happen, there's no proof. People can say whatever they want, but they're going on, 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 uh, on very flimsy things. It's ridiculous. But I, I try to stay out of politics myself, because, uh, especially in Israel, because it's very hard to understand. And uh, I didn't come here for political reasons whatsoever. I came for religious reasons, solely for religious reasons. Yeah. No exit order. Yeah. You mean they can't leave the country? They can't leave the country. I've heard about that, yeah. You're not lucky not to have that. Order. I don't know if I can leave or not. But I don't even want to leave at this point. Okay. I'm not even trying to leave. It's, uh, that's not even come up. We want to stay here. I hope to stay for the rest of our life with our kids, but I, uh, we'll see. No, no, it started because uh, we were living in Asia and we applied for Aliyah and after seven months we were denied because of the, of the, uh, of the, uh, it's not the Mishra Hapanim, it's the Jewish agency. They, they, they really could understand our, our case, so they handed it over to the Mishra Hapanim and they denied us for some things that shouldn't be denied and one thing led to another and they didn't keep their promise and so we just went along with it and we were already here and we're just trying to do the right thing. And one thing leads to another, they keep uh, stalling, they keep saying this, they keep saying that, which is, uh, makes life hard for us. Because we've done what, we've done what we're supposed to do. I mean, I don't, I don't know what else. I think uh, they don't really care when, it get, when you get in the system. I don't think they care on an individual, personal level. Yeah, I think you just fall into the cracks and that's it once, you, once you're in. It's unfortunate, but uh, everything happens for a reason, so. I don't know all the reasons, that's for sure. I don't, yeah, we have, I think they've made some realizations. In fact, I talked to my daughter today. So I keep a good, you know, I keep a good relationship, I try. But she's a teenager, you know, 15 years old, so people have, uh, kids go through a lot of things. I have to understand that. There's, a, you know, there's something that she needs to express and develop, and most teenagers I see are uh, very rebellious for the most part. Not so much in Asia like it is here. A little more dis disciplined there. But uh, no, we have a, I think we have a good relationship now. As you know, it's, as a teenager, it's basically she's a good child, but uh, she's growing. She wants to go to the army, she says. So we don't, you know, don't want to squash up. We want her to, we want to develop what she wants. But it's, you know, uh, in this country, you asked about the feminist thing you asked before. I, uh, what I see is more with the children thing. The children get away with things that uh, they don't talk to the I mean, I'm sure there's a lot of bad parents. I'm sure there is. But I, I think it's a little bit one-sided. They, they don't discuss with the parents before, it, before, they take, before they do something with the children. They should discuss with the parents. They just take the children's word and that's it. And it's, I don't think that's right at all because they make, they've admitted they make a lot of mistakes by doing that. That's just their policy. And it's... it's I understand they have to be safe. I totally understand, but you can't, there's a saying, you can't throw the baby out with the bathwater. You've got to see everything in its own place. And I think they are in crisis mode many times. If, uh, they have, they're overworked, understaffed. And so uh, I don't think they look into each case so, so clearly. They have a lot of things going on. So when, that ha when, you're, when you're simply a number, you're in the system. And that's like, they don't really get it, what you're going through. Try to be, you know. I try. That's why I know they're making some big mistakes. It's very, it hurt. It hurt me very much. They did. They don't realize that. My friends can tell you. The rabbis can say that. They, they can see. But uh, like I said, once you're in a number in the system, you're so far gone in their, in their eyes that you're just one of many. You know. So they don't see that. So uh, that that what hurts me. I didn't come to Israel for that for that reason, but I have to deal with it now, and it's very hard.
We had a very nice lifestyle overseas, you know? Big piece of land with fruit trees near the ocean, a big house. We gave it all up to come here. I had no idea it would be like this, but okay, maybe it's a test. Maybe we do certain things, maybe it's not, I, I don't know. But as long as I keep doing the right thing, I try. If it comes to a point, then we'll have to we'll deal with it. It's getting close, but it's been a long road. You know, it's been a really long road, so, you know, sometimes I think, how could I do much longer? I keep trying and see what happens. Well, I do it for the two mostly. I do it for us too, because we want to live a Jewish life. It's my, my wife loves it, I love it. I study, uh, I understand. I, like I said, I've been around the world and I know a lot of different religions and philosophies very well. But I'm a Jew by heart. I'm a Jew, I was born as a Jew, and I understand what we need to do to keep a strong Judaism. So for my kids, it's the best place in the world, I believe, for kids to grow up. And, but you know, it's good, for, it's good for adults. It's just that they have to, uh, adults have to live here and have some rights. It's hard to live as an adult if you don't have the basic rights. And so if they deny that certain points, it's, it makes it difficult. But religiously and spiritually, they can never deny God's presence on you. They can't take that away. That's my, that's my intrinsic right. So uh, we're trying. We'll see what happens. We will do what we have to do. Fortunately, I have a very faithful religious wife who understands, you know, that ultimately God's in control. So uh, there's a saying, man proposes, God disposes. So we, we do our best. I know that we're doing, on our, uh, we, we can always improve daily in our life, especially in this month of Elul, it's, a, it's Elul, it's a very special month. We're trying, but, um, and there's always room for improvement, but I mean, on, on the basic part, we're doing the right thing. There's, we're not doing anything wrong. We're, we're living a, a right kosher Jewish life. And, uh, but like I said, once you get in the system, they, they, it's, a sec, it's, it's a thing that they don't really get deep, you know? This is not what the Jewish state was about in Torah and in, in, in the religious books, it's really different of what the uh, modern Israel really presents and what's written in the Torah or the Jewish holy books. It's, it's a really big difference. I didn't really realize that before I came here. So it was a big wake-up call. But still, nothing no, nothing happens without God's hand. So uh, we'll see what happens. There's some, in, of course, there's some. Uh, that's how the one of the, uh, the the temples, if you know in Jerusalem, got destroyed because there was internal fighting amongst Jews. Well, we have to clear that up. That's not what we're here for. I, I have a problem with it. I don't have a problem with anybody. I'm, I can talk to Jew, secular, a religious Jew. I don't have a problem whatsoever. What they look like, no problem for me. But I guess people have that. That's really their problem, not my problem. I, I think they intervene too much. I, I, like I said before, they, they take too much of the child's what they say and without even talking to the parent. I think they have to balance it because I know there's probably some parents that do abuse. I'm sure there is. But I think they, they take it too far. And I think they need to step in when it needs to be stepped in. But when they need to step in, but I think they, uh, they, I don't, I think they should mind their business a little bit more. Personally, if they see a person living a good life, I, a good family life, I think when, once they make a mistake, it's a little bit too late in this, in, in this country. Other countries, it's not so bad that I see that. Here, you're like, practically, you're guilty until proven innocent. But in, you know, in this America, they're saying you're, you're innocent until proven guilty. It's like the opposite here. It's, like, it's, it's amazing. So, uh, okay, but nothing... Nothing happens for no reason. There's got to be a reason for everything. If we can't see it on the surface, something deep, spiritual, we don't understand. But as long as we do the right thing, then uh, my heart's clean that, I, uh, that I'm uh, progressing the way I'm, I, sh I feel that I should be progressing. If I'm not going to force anyone to live my way, and I, no one should force me to live their way. So, so uh, basically, People need to be a little more mature, but there's, there's, some, there's so much hatred in the world that it's, it's a shame. So uh, I guess, you know, what you can do is save yourself first. You have to work on your own self. It's a, it's a lifetime mission, you know, to work on yourself. I'm a Jew and I go through the Jewish way. If someone wants to go their own way, well, good for them, you know? They shouldn't put their on me, nor should I put mine on them. As long as uh, we can respect each other. It's the main thing. Because God's in control, not me, not you, no, you know. We do what we got to do. That's why I'm here. <laughs> right. Okay, good, good. Welcome.
and thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Any, anything I can do?